Good morning, everyone. Well, we've got something very exciting today. We have one of our graduate students, Dr. Erskine, is here, and she's going to do over-the-shoulder training. This is free to her. It's free to everyone who actually takes the course. When they're done with the Stanley Institute curriculum, if you want to do over-the-shoulder training, we can do that, and it's no charge to the doctor. So the first thing we're going to do this morning is we're going to sit down and review the treatment plan. Okay, we just reviewed the plan. We've got three implants going in the upper right. These two are going into healed sites, and this is going into a, a fresh extraction socket. We have a, a molar here that has some root blunting, so we feel pretty good about our five thread rule. Let's go see how it actually plays out. All right, we're getting started, getting, getting local placed. So here's our star of the day, our surgical guide. It's a type four fully guided, implying that the implant is placed through the guide and it's dentition supported, so type 4D. And here's our drilling protocol. I like to tape it right to the back wall so we can see exactly what we're going to be doing today. Okay, showtime, getting started. All right, we're separating the bridge. All right, we were able to get the three unit bridge out, and as you can see, it retained the crown, so we're gonna go ahead and section the roots. So this is our double action run okay. so it's got a mechanical advantage, it's really, really nice. Okay. I think you'll like this a lot. Gilda, with these teeth, when they're root canal, they come out in little pieces. Mm -hmm. This is typical. There you go. Oh, that was good. Beautiful baby. You did great. Was that all three of them? Yeah. Okay, great. You good? All right, and then you check the verification windows and just make sure that it looks like we're intimately adapted to the tooth. And it looks, from my angle, looks really good. Mm -hmm. And when we build these guides, we yeah. like to build them with a flat plane right here. Mm -hmm. So your assistant can hold that. Okay. Or if you need to, put your finger and put a little pressure to keep it seated. Sure. The, the, a lot of labs will just make those as round rods, and that's no good. So a flat plane across there is perfect. I mean, it doesn't affect the tongue or the breathing. Okay. So it's a really nice feature. Okay, so now that we know that fits, we have to do that uh, slightly palatal. You should cut a deeper incision. I think you might have it. I think you just need to just keep working it the way you are. That looks good right there. How so you're you're on the bone with the beaver tail, mm -hmm. and just walk it backwards. Is the bottom coming loose? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's okay. If it comes loose, we can we have another one we can put in there. Mm -hmm. These things have a tendency to to kind of pop. So while you're holding it back with the beaver tail, I'll just slightly insert this and that's that's really it then then it will be held out of the way sure. and then just verify that it's seated all the way and you're good to go okay so what we're going to do now is you're going to step through your drill protocol and i'm going to come to the other side in a five two in a three position a three eight in the four position and a three eight in the five position three and four are 21 length and five is 24 length so i did take out the stop positions for the 24s okay. but then the 21s you have to go through all of them Okay. Mm -hmm. Now wiggle your handle until it seats inside the master cylinder. And just shake it around until it seats. That's it, good. Just wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it. Pull the drill out a little bit sometimes so it's not engaging the bone, and then wiggle the, the, the guide sleeve, and then it'll seat. There you go. Don't force it. It's a it's a okay. it's an angle yeah. issue. It's not a force yeah, issue. Perfect. Now, sometimes go ahead. If you can insert there, that's fine. Yeah. So that's one way to do it, and it's if you can get that in, you can. Great. But a lot of times, what happens is that hits there, and you can't do it that way. Okay. But if you can get it in, that's fine. Okay. okay. Are you in? I am. Slide up and down, nice and passively. Okay. That was that was in. Okay, now you're in. Okay, so you just step on the rheostat and, and push the drill all the way to the bottom. Uh, just with that button. Right, the middle part there. And then just push hard. Push hard. Yep, harder. Harder. There you go, harder. More force. There you go. That's it. You can't go too deep. You cannot go too deep because that little collar right there is going to stop you. So this is not going to go into the sinus. There's no way you could hurt anything. This is the small one, so this is a small one, so you're gonna do the same thing in the posterior. Step around here, let me show you something. When I go in, I usually put it in here like this, and then I carry the back to the mouth to move the lip out of the way. 
I put the tip in, but I try not to engage the tip on the bone and I wiggle that. See that, now it's in? If you put this in first, it's v just like that. You can get this in perfect, but now it's a little bit more difficult sometimes to get it in. In her case, she's b beautifully healthy, so you can do it that way, but it's very rare. So usually I do it like this, sure. wiggle it, and then seat it and just drill. And good, look, we, I'm engaging bone, great. We got seven, eight millimeters of bone with a 2-0 drill, so that's encouraging. Okay, so that's for the, for the blue one. Down. And that the, the the measurement that you're seeing from the guide to the to the uh, to the stop position, yeah. that's how much bone we're going to engage. Okay. So that's our yeah. five thread roll. That's good. Done. And that's it. Okay. Excellent work. Now we're done with the two o by twenty one. So we're going to take that out, and, and we know we need it? a twenty four right for the five position. Yeah. It's a length twenty four. So that's that one there. Okay. And then we're going to drill that one, and it's a yellow. So we're going to go to the yellow sleeve starting with the 2-0. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's in the five position. Perfect. Right, and guide it down. And give it a good push because you're going through cortical bone. That's it. Push it all the way and you're down. That's it. That is excellent, excellent hands, hand, hand work right there. It's perfect. This is getting bigger in diameter. That's yeah. all. Every row is bigger in diameter. Mm -hmm. Every column, I'm sorry, every column is diameter. Mm -hmm. Every row is length. Yep. So this drill length is 17, yep. this drill length is 21, and this one's 24. Yep. So two of the sites are going to be using 21s, mm -hmm. and one site uses 24. So right here, the drill length is 21, 21, 24. So we've sectioned the bridge, we've extracted the tooth, we have good uh, amount of bone, radicular bone, and what we're doing is creating the osteotomy. Perfect. Perfect. And then just give it some apical pressure. Push a little harder. And that's it. Very well done. Excellent bone dance. Are you still engaging bone? Good. Good. Yep. You got a couple millimeters there. Good. And that's it. You're done. Okay, you're done. Now, stop for a second. You'll have your assistant just grab a, t a two by and clean that out. Okay. And then you can go back in and make sure you go all the way. So sometimes it gets hard and you're like, I'm pushing hard, but it's not going. Pull it out all the way, clean the flutes, and then go in the rest of the way. So you're done with that one. Okay, so the next one on the sheet, the next one on the sheet is the 3.2, and then the four position is 21. So we're gonna go to 21 row, 21 row, the, the 2.8. Let's do the 2.8 on 21, yep, that's it. Push on it, there you go. And you're done. As soon as he touches all the way to depth, you're done. You don't have to hang out, you're doing Absolutely perfect. Now, we need the same length for the blue. Mm -hmm. So pick up the blue, go to the small end. I don't know why this is why something with this is tricky. Maybe it's because I'm doing multiple ones. Something is confusing me. Okay, so the smaller implants are going to be using the gold. Yes. The bigger implants uses the blue. Mm -hmm. If you have a blue master cylinder, which mm -hmm. is the hole in there, you have to use the blue cylinder. So just push it and it's going all the way down, mm -hmm. then don't spin it. Okay. Just stop there, just take it out. Okay. So the, the osteotomy is done, okay? So that's it. So that's it for the blue one. Okay. So the hole's done for the blue one. Let's go to the yellow, okay. okay? Okay, so Jen's gonna change it to implant mode. So instead of spinning at 20,000, she changed it to 30. A way to test it is to step on the rheostat and just make sure it spins slow. And that's it. Okay, now, the next thing you need to know is stop position. So there's our snap link. Yep. Okay, there's four little grooves in here, okay? Yeah. This one is on the stop, the bottom one is one. This one's two, mm -hmm. three, and four. So it's on two. So is, should it be on two? No. Jen, I said let's do a five position first. Oh, sorry. My apologies. So we're going to do five first because you're going to build confidence by getting five in first. So mm -hmm. the reason I knew that was wrong is she handed me blue to green. That's okay. for the back. If this is yellow to gray. Okay, so let's check stop position. That's stop position three. So let's verify that it's right. So we'll kind of wiggle it until it seats. You'll see it seat inside the implant. Mm -hmm. Nope, no. not all the way yet. Sometimes you have to, there you go. Now turn it upside down. Now, perfect, drop that and carry that to the mouth upside down so you don't drop it. When the, when the plastic snap link yes. touches the top of the master cylinder, you're done. Perfect, you see it going in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it.
Now you're feeling that little bit of resistance? Mm -hmm. That's the torque that you're getting for the insertion. And just drop that in the magnet. We use the magnet so that we don't lose things because it doesn't flow around. And then okay. I'm do this. Now, before you do, verify your stop position. So you're going to look at this. Always hold it this way because stop position one is on the bottom okay. and four is on the top. So there's a groove on the bottom and it's on the second one up. So this is stop position two. Okay. Is that correct? Doing full mouth, we'll have a driver for every tooth okay. already preset to the right depth. It's just uh, efficiencies, but you don't have to do it that way. Okay. It's very well stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then turn it upside down. Okay, and then keep it upside down. There you go. And then carry it to the mouth. All right, speed has changed, water's off. Speed has changed. And I can hear the motor, I can actually hear the motor getting tight. So I know you're feeling torque. You're at 21 centimeters. It's getting stuck on this. That's okay. That's okay. So what's, what, what she's showing you here is that the plastic, little, the little part right here is stuck. That happens all the time. I usually just ignore it, but I'm going to move it around there so it's not in your way. Okay, keep going until it touches the metal. Perfect. That is perfect. 29 newton centimeters. Okay, wiggle it out. Sometimes it gets stuck. One of the easiest ways to get it out is, Jen, let's go, and you pull the whole thing out. So see how it gets looser? Okay, that's how you look at it. What stop position do I have it on? Two. Two. And then let's verify that it's two for the blue. Yep. And that's correct. It's always important to double check. So Jen, super smart. She puts it on there. She's checked it three times herself, but you're going to want to check it again because if you put it one stop position off, you're off by a millimeter. Yeah. And that's then you're like, how did that happen? <laughs> you know, the same thing with the speed and, and it's a verbal confirmation. So she says, speed has changed and you go, speed has changed, you know, back and forth so that everybody's on the same page. Now, let me show you how I, I go to the mouth with this because I showed you earlier. I'm holding it up like this. I even put my hand underneath it because I don't want to lose it, right? So come over here for a second. Take the back of this to the back of the mouth first, okay. then come forward. Don't, okay. don't try to put this in, it'll fall to the back of the mouth. So you go okay. back first and then enter the hole, okay? So back and then enter the hole, okay? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, all right, speed's changed. Speed has changed. Okay, it's not going in, so wiggle, the, wiggle a little bit so it starts to engage. There you go. There it goes. And as soon as it touches, you're done. Perfect. perfect. And then just get it nice and finger tight. Give it a good twist. And that's it, that's all I do. The plastic's hurting her. Jen, let's take that optic get out and use the U-shape so she can see. Okay. So some people who have nice, soft lips, the, the uh, retractor, let's pull it out for a second. Mm -hmm. And that way, when you pull with your mirror or your Minnesota, it's not in the way. Mm -hmm. When you pull this, it'll be in the way, but it's sometimes necessary for, for certain patients. Okay. What's that? Soft lip Soft, Soft lip patients, that's right. You heard that, she, big, heard, she heard me. Big lips. <laughs> she heard me. She said, voluptuous. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a compliment, honestly. All right. So we've got <laughs> Tate and apply a little pressure, and you can't get your finger in the way. I'm going to show you a little trick. Maybe you'll like this. Okay. So let me step in here for a second. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this very lightly on top of the implant. Okay like that, right? And then I'm gonna place the ball burnisher right in the center and then rotate with my left hand. Do you see that? So I'm just gonna let you try that, okay? You don't have to. If you can get your fingers in there without creating any off-axis loads, you're fine. He actually has muscles in his fingers, that's what it is. I open all the pickles around here. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, oh, I can definitely tell a dog you're tighten this one. Now just ax axial loads, no off-axis loads. And it's really important for these Im immediate emergency, um, immediate placement sites, because there's not a lot of bone on the lateral aspect of the implant, right? Mm -hmm. You just snug it up yep. and pull it straight out, you're done. And this is mineral os, so it's cortical cancellous chips. It's my go-to bone graft material. It's uh, allograft. Now the reason we're doing this forehand technique is that if you try to carry the bone to the mouth yourself, it's really hard to scrape off the top. So you have a tendency to take the spoon and try to like yes. dunk, dunk it, yeah. and it doesn't work. It falls right onto the cotton and you don't get it. So 
And mm -hmm. you're going to basically bring it up, the bone graft, up to the level of the tissue. Don't try to build it above the level of the tissue. That will just slough off. It won't have any blood supply and it will just slough off. That scares the patient because yep. they think they lost their graft. And then that's never good. Mm -hmm. You don't want to scare the patient. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> so all three implants are in right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going great. So for a molar mm -hmm. with an implant going in, one cc is plenty. Yeah, unless they're like a football player, you know, mm -hmm. six foot five and, you know, that kind of thing. But otherwise, one cc is plenty. It looks perfect. <laughs> so what we're looking at here is three perfectly parallel implants that were placed via a, a type four surgical guide. This one in particular used the five thread rule to get this implant into the fresh extractor socket within a millimeter of the floor of the sinus. That's what we can predictably do every time with guided. And look at this one. Look how close we are to that natural tooth. We're a millimeter and a half away from that natural tooth right there. That's what we can do with guided and well done. Well done. <laughs> Just do a couple simple interrupted right between sure. the implants and then that's it. And then my favorite pickup for this is this one here, the two and ones, because okay. it can actually hold the, the tissue a little bit. When I graft, I seldom use a membrane. So the answer is, is if I have an intact blood supply that I'm trying to prevent from epithelial downgrowth, then I use a membrane. But over a fresh extraction socket, there is no, I don't get primary closure. If I don't close for primary, primary closure, there no is, there's no intact blood supply on top of that dead clot. So I don't need a, I don't need a bare membrane on top. Yeah, and the other thing is, there's, a, there's an enzyme in the mouth called collagenase, which is designed to break down collagen. So if you take a, a fabric membrane, like a collagen membrane, and you put it over the extraction socket, and it's exposed to the mouth, in two weeks, they will come back and they will complain about the stench in their mouth because that collagen is, is not becoming part of them. It's deteriorating in the mouth like a piece of food. Yeah. It's really not good. Yeah. yeah, so I don't like using it over extraction sockets right here. I'm going to suggest that we just take this because this will slough off because it's, it's just sitting on the margin. Yeah, so I just get that out so it doesn't scare the patient tonight when they have grits on their tongue. I think you're done. So we just finished our over-the-shoulder training. Mm -hmm. As I said earlier, this is, this is a free service to our doctors that when they're done with the course, if they want to do over-the-shoulder training, they can. And not only can they do it, but they can do it as many times as they like. <laughs> so uh, if you want to do it once or twice or three times, it's perfectly fine. So we just did one today with Dr. Erskine. How did it go? It went good. It went good. Yeah. <laughs> so she's being very humble, but she just she just placed three implants in the upper right, two in the healed sites, and one in a fresh extraction socket. So, I mean, that is, and they're all perfectly parallel. As you can see on the video, we're going to show you the radiographs, how perfectly parallel they are. Look at the volume of bone that was grafted around the implant at the three position. Mm -hmm. Notice that. And also notice how close we are to the number six natural tooth with that implant, or about a millimeter and a half. Yep. And that was done, how many guided cases have you done? None. So this, that was, <laughs> this is her first case. Yeah. And she has like world-class output. So she's being very humble right now. <laughs> but she's really, really good. And I, I really enjoyed working with you today. I Thank hope you, you enjoyed the procedure. It was great. Thanks yeah. so much. Sure.